They are part of the show at GMFB. We're feeling good on the Friday. We've got Tebow Mania. This is the only show where we will talk Tim Tebow and go into depths about Olivia Rodrigo, the 18-year-old mu- uh, musical sensations catalog and new music that our four hosts are talking about before the show. You only get that right here on Good Morning Football. Sean O'Hara, Peter Schrager, myself, Kay Adams, Stacey Dales, how are you? I am fantastic. It's good to be with you guys on a uh, Friday in May. Thank you for having me. Mm-hmm. Love it. We are so happy to have you covering Feel good Friday. up early there in the central time zone. Yep, as we hit the lead block. Tebow. Lead block. Lead block. Stacey, I don't know if you're aware. Tebow Mania is back in full swing, whether you're happy about it or not. It's here. And not just Tebow Mania, tight end Tebow Mania. He was on the practice field yesterday after officially signing uh, there with the rest of his Jaguar teammates in Jacksonville. In a statement yesterday, Tebow wrote in part, I know it will be a challenge, but it is a challenge I embrace. And by the way, it didn't take long. The Tebow number 85 jersey already on sale at shop.jaguars.com. Right next to, look at that, right next to Trevor Lawrence and Travis Etienne. Excitement around the league is there for Tim Tebow. Excitement, of course, in Florida, where he already has a ton of fans from his days playing college football. What needs to happen, Stacy, for you to view this signing as a success for this team? Well, you guys just had to start with me, right, as the, uh, the guest here today. Uh, yeah. Where do I start with this? Um, I will say maybe Tim Tebow comes back reincarnated as a tight end, perhaps. Listen, I have great respect for Urban Meyer, the culture that he's trying to establish in Jacksonville, Trevor Lawrence, the excitement surrounding this. I have a lot of respect for Tim Tebow. But as I ponder this, as I watch it, I have to say, when I look at the tight end position, you guys, it is so coveted. It is invaluable in this league. It is golden what tight ends do and historically have done, and what we see with offenses now, 12 personnel, 13 personnel even. This position, the way they run block, the way they're required uh, in pass protection, the way they're utilized in the receiving game. And then I think about all the greats, and I think about Ditka and Newsom and Antonio Gates and Gonzalez. And I think about the current guys, Kelsey and Kittle, uh, Gronk, Guys like Kyle Rudolph, who was basically a sixth offensive lineman when he was with the Minnesota Vikings for so long. Mercedes Lewis, you guys, who is entering 16 years in the National Football League with the Green Bay Packers. I don't know if I've covered a greater leader in the NFL in my career covering this amazing game we all love. And so I'm a little insulted and I hesitate to use that word guys this morning as we start the show because it's a little negative and I'm a positive person but I'm a little bit insulted because the tight end position for me is absolute gold Mm. so really when I think about mentorship that's the best uh case scenario for me with with Tim Tebow outside of reincarnation can he become an otherworldly mentor if he makes this football team and, and that'll be the best case for me keeping it real I love it Stacey what if what if he doesn't embarrass himself? And what if he brings some sort of element of, here's what Coach Meyer wants, I'm gonna set the standard. That to me is a success. Like, you're naming all the great tight ends. I agree, there have been a lot of awful quarterbacks or a lot of people who have thrown passes in NFL games who are disrespecting Johnny Unitas and Dan Fouts and Dan Marino the way they throw the football. I, I, I look at it as everyone is so upset about Tebow. And I'm not talking about you, Stacey. I know that you're taking it from a rational standpoint. But it is a 90-person roster spot, and he's there in May. If this becomes a sideshow and a carnival, and Tebow yesterday was wearing gloves about 45 minutes before practice, and I saw Trey Burton tweeted like, hey, buddy, the practice isn't for another 45 minutes. You don't need the gloves on. Like, if it becomes this ongoing joke where everyone is just, then I think it's a failure, and it's, you know, it was a publicity play, or it was something where it was a favor to a buddy. But if he comes in there and he works hard and he tries his hardest and he sets a standard as to this is what the coach wants. This is more about culture than what I'm going to do as a tight end or what I'm going to do on the field in trick packages in the red zone. Then I think it's a success. If he makes this team, I'll be really surprised. I'll be really surprised. And I'll tell you this. If he makes this team, Hmm. he'll have earned it because I think a lot of people in that locker room, 
and I'm not speaking for any of them, I think there are a lot of raised eyebrows, not just around the league and on media. I think a lot of people within the Jacksonville locker room who are younger and are not going to be guys who are going to talk out on this or are certainly not going to cross Urban Meyer in their first you know, parlance with him. But I think a lot of people were like, really, Tebow, right out of the gates? Really? Okay. Um, if he makes it, he's going to have to earn it. And those coaches, they're, they're going to have to look at the teammates and look at the other guys in the locker room and look at the 40 men that they released right before training camp and say, uh, this guy gives us a better chance to win than you do. And that's hard to do, especially right out of the gates, especially if you're Urban Meyer trying to establish yourself in the NFL. Peter, you won't be the only one surprised. I think there will be a lot of people uh, jumping in on that bandwagon. I think when you look at success, look, everybody defines that differently. It's already been a success. We're talking about it at the top of this shower, this show, we, and we've done it at the top of the hour a couple times this week. So <laughs> for the Jacksonville Jaguars, this is a W. This is an absolute win right now. Signing Tim Tebow, who is a Pied Piper down in Duval, Everybody in Jacksonville loves him. They got the number one overall pick in Trevor Lawrence. They've got Urban Meyer leading the way. I mean, spirits have never been higher in Jacksonville right now. And if you're Amy Palsic, her phone and her email has never been busier. And Amy Palsic is, is one of the best people that I've ever met in the NFL. And even she, I'm sure, is being inundated with requests and things that she's she the PR director. We got to tell Tim the, the just, viewers, Sean, who she is. Yes, yeah, sorry. Amy, Amy Palsic, the PR director for the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm sure it's Tebow mania down there right now, and she's got she's to handle it. So from that standpoint, from a PR standpoint, it's already been a success. They're selling his jersey online already. He has yet to even run a route or catch a pass. So from that standpoint, yeah, I think it's been a success. There it is. I mean, you got Lawrence, you got Etienne, and then you got Tim Tebow. I, I, I mean, yeah. we've heard of basketball players, Stacey Dales, converting and becoming tight ends after never having played football. I don't know that I've ever heard of a quarterback transitioning to tight end. Kelvin Benjamin just got signed by the Giants, former wide receiver, now moving to tight end. So not that big right. of a shift. But from a football standpoint, let me just say this. I don't know if people realize how hard it is to play tight end in the NFL. And here's why. You have to do everything. You have to be an offensive lineman on third down and one. You've got to cut off a defensive end on the backside of a run play. One of the toughest tasks in, in football. And then on third down, you've got to be able to outrun a linebacker. You've got to run a route, and you've got to be able to run past a safety. So it's a tough position to play. Sometimes offenses ask you to block on the move after the snap. So it's not even like, hey, I'm lined up on the line of scrimmage, and I'm blocking the guy right in front of me. I've got to figure out where to go. So being the third tight end or fourth tight end, you get very limited reps. This is, this is as uphill as it gets mm -hmm. for Tim Tebow. Mm. But there is that little part of the internet and part of NFL fandom, Sean, that people think he can actually contend, that there's an expectation that he would be out there catching passes from Trevor Lawrence. Are you saying that that's impossible? Is there any expectation or possibility Tebow could legitimately succeed at the tight end position, or is this just people getting swept into round two of Tebow mania? <laughs> I, I, I don't. I, I just don't see it happen. Given everything I was just talking about with the reps, he's certainly not going to be mm. catching passes from Trevor Lawrence in practice because he won't be running with the ones. You know, Trevor's going to be getting all the number one snaps. Tebow, I mean, look to start out with, he, he'll be able to grasp the offense because of his quarterback background. But just the reps, and he's just he's going to be so raw with everything, running the routes, learning how to stick somebody, and you know how to how to feint a different route. That, that's going to be something that's an art form and that's going to it's going to take time for him to cultivate that skill i do find it really interesting the dichotomy because the the person like me who never played in the nfl the person who has covered the league for a long time loves a good story i feel like all right tebow's in here i've really noticed and stacy k tell me the same the ex-player has had a completely different reaction to this than people 100%. in our positions who are maybe on the outside of the locker room looking in. It is such a trigger point to so many ex-players. And Sean, I think you're voicing it well. I, I get the feeling that this is, like Stacy said, it's not viewed as, hey, let's try this. It's an experiment. It is viewed as an insult to many ex-players who put their blood, sweat, and tears into this. The Mercedes Lewis, so then you're not saying that Mercedes is one of them, but 17 years to be in a tight end and keeping your to yeah. then just get a chance after yeah. eight years away 
because your old college coach. I find it really interesting. This is the first time really in our show's history where the ex player is fully on this side and it's all the ex players I've spoken to. And then the journalist, maybe the person looking for story, the person who's enjoying a little May storyline is on this side. Uh, it, it's really interesting. I feel just Okay, very quickly though. The story came out. The, the I, I just wanted to add, Kay, let, let's remind everybody there are six tight ends currently on this roster, okay? Man Hurts is at the front of it. They drafted a guy in the fifth round in Farrell. So nine seasons without playing in the NFL. It, it's, it's remarkable. I, I can't get past that. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just had to remind our viewers. No, it's 100% true. And not even, and, uh, to your point, Stacey, I look at the other, the, the free agents at tight end, not there in Jacksonville, the guys who don't even have a spot on a roster like Jesse James or Richard Rogers. Yesterday, I thought it was so interesting, Shrags, that Trey Burton obviously has a big familiarity with Tebow. I'm sure he loves Tebow. Trey Burton is, you know, the Tim Tebow of tight ends when it comes to being a stand-up guy. He's a big friend of the show, Super Bowl champion. He tweeted... Uh, I, we don't have the tweet, but he tweeted uh, there was some footage of Tebow walking out onto the practice field to join his teammates, and he was wearing gloves already walking, and Trey just laughed at it. I don't know if you saw it, and he said, somebody tell him he doesn't have to have the gloves on yet. So that's a guy. Trey Burton is a free agent, if I'm not wrong. So he's a guy who's looking for a job. It's a little different because he's he knows Tim Tebow and is probably his boy, but I think it's so fascinating to hear see that part of this story play out as well. It is. Okay. <laughs> We've got a lot more good morning football up ahead. Stacey Fields is here the entire time. Uh, it is hashtag feel good Friday right here on good morning football. So we're going to actually put it to you. What do you want to talk about? Whether it is an NFL player, a coach, a team, a fan base, who should be feeling good right now? Hit us up at GMFB on Twitter and we'll be back after this.